Hello there. Three European photographers, Michael Ackerman, Martin Bogren and Antoine de Gata, create photographs that speak with a similar voice. In order to communicate their introspective and personal responses to the world, they've pushed the limits of documentary photography into a domain that can probably be described as Impressionism. Their photographs resemble snippets from a scrapbook or a scramble of frames from a film that delves into the anguish of its characters. These photographers are occupying and experiencing a side of existence that most of us find possibly voyeuristically interesting, but we'd rather not make it our home. They seem to be occupying a limbic state as they struggle to find their place within an unstable universe. They say that the camera never lies, but it can stretch the... When I discovered the work of photographer Michael Ackerman, I was at first drawn to the visual power of his photographs in his books Half-Life and Fiction. Every picture is for me surprise. Uh, none, none of them are pre-imagined and every one of them there's an accident that that makes there's always an accident involved uh, that shows me something that I didn't see when I was making the picture. He was born in Tel Aviv, Israel, and now lives and works in Warsaw. He isn't big on technology and often uses a Holger Lomography camera. But unlike most of the Lomography images that I see, he isn't trying to be funky or trendy. He's using these devices because the clarity of normal photography is far too precise to communicate what he's experiencing. This work began with a series of portraits of men uh, that I met mostly in bars. I was using a Polaroid camera to show the people I want to photograph what I was doing, but also to, to um, give them pictures so they, will be, they would be more open to letting me photograph them. It worked because mostly the pictures I liked and the pictures they liked were very different. So I can give them what they wanted and I can keep what I wanted. I don't know Ackerman personally, but from his images and his books, one can tell that he's talking about his interior universe. It's uncertain and unrestrained. If he was a writer or a poet or a musician, he might have found an established path for his expression. Instead, he had to carve out a photographic visual language in order to express himself. He has a fascination with the concept of time. He spends a lot of time worrying about not wasting time. A great deal of his inspiration comes from a place of understanding that he, like all of us, are living with the shadows of death all around us. When he photographs, he becomes connected with the present and with the subject matter, and this sparks an urgency that makes him aware of his aliveness. This idea of impermanence is one of the themes that seems common to these three photographers. Their blurry images, the unfixed nature of existence, how we grapple for something solid, how certainty is almost impossible to pin down. His images are documentary and autobiographical in the sense that he's recording particular aspects of his life, but they dissolve into a dreamlike state where fact and fiction blur, the darker inner turmoil that we as humans must face. But his images are also delicate and he's searching for beauty that can be found in straddling the space between chaos and order. Throughout his books, he's maintaining a feeling and tone of being suspended between disconnection and the need for resolution. After a long period of searching and photographing alone, Ackerman's life changed. A wife and a child filled a space that informed much of his work. His photography shifted further away from the void, but still he's able to maintain a sense of uncertainty and fragility.
Antoine de Agata, a Frenchman, has been called the Pope of underground photography. He delves into the shadows of human existence and captures raw and intense moments. He examines human vulnerability, addiction, sexuality, and the human dramas that often remain hidden from public view. He's looked at sex workers in Bangkok to drug addicts in Paris. Many of his images I can't show on YouTube. Je t'expliquais d'abord que la condition première, c'est l'inconscience. Parce que d'abord, enfin moi, en tant qu'être humain, je n'ai pas le, ni le courage, ni euh, la volonté, ni la capacité à assumer, ni physiquement, ni moralement, ce que je dois faire pour arriver à faire des photographies. He too has extended the limits of visual storytelling. His work explores the marginalized, the forgotten and the unseen. And he challenges viewers with uncomfortable truths. Diagata isn't a tourist in these dark spaces that he inhabits. He immerses himself in the worlds that he's photographing. He finds beauty within the chaos and contradictions that he discovers there. He's the son of a butcher from Marseille. At 14, Diagata dreamed of a career as a preacher, but he became a punk and an anarchist. He traveled the world, took drugs, and spent time in prison. At 29, he moved to New York and learnt under Larry Clark and Nan Golden. Today is a member of Magnum Photos. Pour faire des images, d'être dans des lieux où je, où je peux m'enfoncer, me laisser couler dans, le, dans la réalité. He maintains a life of uncertainty by avoiding the temptations of permanence and security that society often demands of us. He's almost always broke, but every now and again he manages to sell a few prints or get a teaching gig. With a bit of cash in his pocket, he vanishes again and continues photographing in his underworld. He can't afford to rent or buy a house. He says that it feels right to live on the edge to stay at level zero. In this state, he feels that he has less chance of getting lost. He maintains a state that is suspended between fear and desire, and that feeds his impulse to photograph. His images are disturbingly framed, and he plays with contrast, blurring, and grain. He leaves viewers feeling a sense of unease and sometimes repulsion but often we find ourselves returning to his images to see more. During COVID, he photographed with a thermal camera to produce his virus series. They captured the fear and the sense of isolation that was a shared response to that period. I became aware of Swedish photographer Martin Bogren when I saw his essay Tractor Boys. One could say that this work followed the documentary tradition because it was reporting on a definitive subject, but the images were highly personal and were on the artistic edge of reportage. The documentary aspect of his work then becomes blurry in books like Passenger and Metropolia. They are more of a stream of consciousness. His photographs become linked by a look and feel rather than by a specific subject matter. He is now delving into a photographic space that has less to do with photojournalism and more in common with the work of Ackerman and Diogada. He believes that our perception of the world is in many ways like a mirror that reflects our inner world. Memories, experiences, thoughts and emotions. 
all define who we are, and this builds within us a unique individual core. Photography for him is a way of connecting with the space within himself. I hope that you enjoyed this walk on the dark side. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.